Hello, welcome to this week's Swedish Startup Session from Next Conference in Berlin. And I'm here with Henrik Bergen from awesome reading app, read or sharing app, I would say, <laughs> ReadMill. Um, and we have a great interview, though with some little uh, breaks with the garbage collection, <laughs> subways and other spaces. But hang on. <laughs> This is the Swedish Startup Session. Hi, welcome back to this week's Swedish Startup Session, and I'm at Next in Berlin with Henrik Bergen. And you're the founder of Reefel. Yeah. One of the Swedish Berlin <laughs> startups, actually. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, met in various various venues and various places. But tell me a little about your background. How uh, did you end up in doing things in Berlin? Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a long story. But uh, I mean, I, I, I kind of all all roads. Kind of led to this place where I am now. Yeah. Um, I, I've over the years tried a lot of different things, and now it just it just all kind of came together here. I think uh, the, why we're in Berlin uh, is because of um, two of my best friends, Eric and Alex, mm -hmm. who, who of course started SoundCloud down yep. here, um, and uh, they they uh, they asked me to come down and work with them back in 2008. Mm -hmm. So I actually never been to Berlin when uh, when I when I said yes. So I just <laughs> took my bags. And I, I and I just moved down, and I was gonna stay for maybe a few months, write mm -hmm. my master thesis mm -hmm. and on uh, the Royal Institute of Technology. But then I kind of got sucked into the whole <laughs> business. It was so happening, uh, yeah. and it was crazy, and it was so much fun, and so such a great learning experience. Yeah. Um, and um, eventually, I left to go back and finish my my degree. And uh, I said to myself, if I if I if I'm ever gonna start something. I, uh, I I'm gonna do it in Berlin. Okay. So so um, so my background is kind of I've been doing a lot of web stuff. I started uh, actually working for an agency in '98, uh, first time, and uh, already then I was building web stuff and mm -hmm. so on on my own. And then I worked on uh, a, a few startups. I ran a company while while I was in school with with David, who is now my co-founder at Readmill, okay. uh, which was uh, a super um, a super failure and. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so so and kind of now we just figured out that you know books is is such an interesting space. Ebooks is, is, is it's going to be a, a huge it's going to be a huge space. And and I think uh, when we started one and a half years ago, people didn't really realize. But yeah. now we see the metrics, and, and, and it's gonna it's gonna be the way people it's quite, read. It's quite interesting because I've been reading books on on the screen uh, for probably like 10 to 15 years. It really? And, yeah. yeah. And people have always said like, no, I love the feeling of paper and you can't read mm. on the screen. Mm. And I was mm. like, yeah, but I read so fast and I have to like <laughs> lug around this yeah. heavy volume. So since for the viewers who don't know about Read Mill, please, right. please tell me about it. Right. So it's it's a best reading application for digital devices. Mm -hmm. So what we do is is basically um, uh, provide the reader with a great reading experience. But the cool thing about it is that you can also craft your own experience around this book and then share that on the web. So we mm -hmm. kind of create an experience around the book, um, and we do that with data. So we kind of track how far have you come into the book, how much time have you spent, where were you when you were reading it, and that kind of thing. And also you can mark any passage and share that. And so we create a page for that on the web, and you can pass it around and share it and so on. And then, uh, people uh, follow each other, uh, can follow your friends and your peers, and, and then you can see and kind of tap into what they are reading and, and what parts they are highlighting. And in a way, as I was talking about in my, in my short talk yeah. that I did, did here as well, was that now we kind of create a way for people to actually deep link to inside of the book. Mm. So it's no longer 
just a placeholder for, you know, where you see kind of author and title and cover, you don't actually get to the juicy parts, the mm -hmm. actual content of the book, um, which is a great marketing tool for publishers and authors, but also a great way for people to figure out what they want to read next. Mm -hmm. Um, but because I, I've been thinking about, uh, I like a lot of people use the Amazon Kindle on my right. iPad, right. and this highlighting, I mean, I can't copy it, I can't really do anything but with that, then, then sort of, if I find a great, great passage, I have to sort of remember the words, go into another application, type them, you know. Yeah. So, what kind of ebooks does Read Mill work with? So, so we, we started out by focusing very much on kind of engineering and design mm -hmm. um, because that's um, maybe where the publishers are most progressive. Yeah. So, they have published a lot of their catalog in, in kind of DRM free format, yeah. which, which is, is, is kind of um, uh, an easier way of, of, of getting started as a, as, a, as a company, kind of building support for only one format. Mm -hmm. So we could, so we wanted to do that because we wanted to iterate on the product quite fast and figure out, so can we actually build a reading experience that's superior to everyone else? And what about our, our the way we kind of construct a social object around this? Yeah. So the way uh, we introduce highlighting for people, the way um, we um, uh, let people uh, read and, and do that in a, in a certain way, right? So we wanted to kind of figure that out, um, and, and and I think we've done that now. Um, so 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 focusing on those 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 kind of verticals um, helped us a lot in the beginning, and now it's time to kind of open up that mm -hmm. and, and make it available for more for more books and for more devices. We're still only available for the iPad. Yeah. Um, so we have some auxiliary apps on like tracker apps for iOS, for iPhone and, and Android, mm -hmm. but the main reading app is yeah. still um, uh, iPad. But what only. kind of format can I use? Uh, PDFs? Can I right. use... You can only uh, use EPUB. You can only yeah. use DRM for EPUB. That's yep. the only thing you can, can you use. So the, the EPUB is kind of the standard mm -hmm. book format now. Yeah. Um, well, PDF is still big, so we have to look into that, but, mm -hmm. but um, uh, EPUB is kind of the, the standard. Yeah. It's coming up with a new version now called EPUB 3, which mm. is really interesting. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's what we support up until yeah. now. And so, um, what, what is disruptive about your business model? Because, I, w I mean, there's obviously a need for people to be able to share quotes or highlights and right. so on, and especially among students, I guess. Uh, but, but how can you monetize this? So, so how we think about I mean, it's, this, this space is still... I mean, it's still changing so fast. Mm -hmm. So actually, what might be true today might not be true next week or next mm -hmm. month. And, and that's actually proven to, 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 to be so fast also because we made a lot of assumptions in the beginning yeah. that, we, that we kind of scrapped now. Um, so, uh, but for now, I mean, what, what, how we think about monetization now is actually to help the publishers, um, help them to, to kind of enter the digital space by giving them a platform where they can see how readers actually consume their products, mm. which is books, right? Because now, when they do marketing budgets, for example, they, 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 what the data they look at is kind of delayed sales statistics, mm. um, maybe on a country basis, or, yeah. you know, not even, definitely not on a city basis, but maybe kind of on a, uh, you know, a state basis or something like that, which, which is kind of crazy, because I talked to, talked to this publisher in the UK, and he said, well, you know, we're, we're, we're a medium publisher, and uh, when we do a marketing, I, I, I don't really know where to do it. We, I think we sell a lot of books in London, but I don't know, mm. which is kind of crazy. It was quite interesting. I, I read just the, the, this week a um, blog post from an author. She was a, like a wrote business book in marketing. Uh, and she said that publishers today know squat about selling books on the internet, uh, either in physical form or, or in the published no. space. So, so then uh, you ask yourself, as an author, why should I even use the, you know, use a publisher if yeah, they're yeah. not doing their job? And, and, and that's selling books, right? Yeah. They know even less about who is actually reading it. Yeah. And and that's just so mind-boggling. Mm. It's just like, 
yeah, it, it's it's it, it's like not knowing who is actually using your products yeah. and who 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 is actually consuming them and how. You don't know where, you don't know when, you don't know in what format, on which device, on anything mm -hmm. like that. And and with the kind of a social platform, yeah. we can aggregate that and kind of repackage it to them and give them analytics on that and then actually maybe make them create better products or mm -hmm. more of, of, of their popular products, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and, and hopefully that also turns into um, you know, a complete loop where people also read, you know, find better books and also read better yeah, books. Yeah. Um, so, so hopefully, you know, we can add some value in, in, in that whole loop. Mm -hmm. how, how big is your team right now? So right now the team is eight people. Yeah. And it's mostly developers and, and, um, and designers. Mm -hmm. um, and how have you spread the word about Red? Mill. Yeah, how we spread it? It's a good, it's a good question, actually. I, I mean, we, we just we just focus on building a really good product, yeah. um, and 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 as Seth Godin says, like try to be remarkable, right? Yeah. And then it's, it kind of spreads by itself. Yeah. Um, I, I was just talking to a guy, and he was like a PR guy, and he was like, Yeah, maybe we should. I saw you talking. Maybe we should work together. And I, I'm like, I don't know. I, 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 I really think that you know it's important to 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 do everything yourself. Not. Forever, maybe, but yeah. in the in the beginning, yeah. like this, to kind of learn the learn the uh, learn the ways of doing it, so you can figure out you know how it works and how much you can actually do by yourself. And what's, so, what, what's yeah. really working or not? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the thing is, we're such in, in such a good space, right? Because yeah. reading is such a positive action. So yeah. Everybody loves sharing. Yeah. Um, and everybody wants to tell their friends what they're reading and how they're reading it and how fast they did it mm -hmm. and so on. So, so we have a lot of kind of virality built into mm -hmm. the product. I wouldn't say it's like a like a viral product in that sense because the the the, the object is quite slow. I mean, yeah. the, you don't spend you know the whole day reading. You have to mm. kind of have a few minutes to 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 kill to to actually read a book. Um, but um, uh, so it's not like super viral, but it has a lot of virality built in yeah. still with sharing and so on. Yeah. Uh, and our integrations with Facebook uh, timeline and so on mm. has been very very mm. very very popular. And how do you see the competition for from the big players like for instance Amazon, uh, Kindle <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and uh, yeah, it's like that. Yeah it's funny now when like we used to see the book space as kind of different from other spaces where these kind of big players are operating but now last week uh, we saw uh, Microsoft invested a lot of money into Barnes & Noble. Oh, I think we have okay. to have a break right. now. <laughs> Players. Okay. okay, we're back from the <laughs> garbage dumping here. So, you were saying... Typically Berlin, yeah. <laughs> you were saying. Yeah, I was saying. So, um, it, it's funny uh, now, it's just big place. We used to think about it like, yeah, you know, books are different. We, we don't have the traditional... Um, a big technology companies, but actually now you know Microsoft just invested quite a lot of money into Barnes and Noble. Three hundred million dollars, or something, something like that. Crazy. They which, own like which, 17 percent percent of, the, of the. That Nuke actually business. make the Nuke division of Barnes and Noble like worth more, more than the entire yeah, company, yeah, which is crazy. Which is quite crazy. Yeah, no, that's crazy. That says something about how hot this space is right now, uh, and you know, it's crazy. Yeah, but we also knew that it was crazy, yeah. and we chose it because it's a it's it's I think that the disruption that is going on, the kind of digital revolution mm -hmm. that's going on, is going to shake these big big players around a bit. Yeah. And I think the game is going to change so fast that it's hard for them to they're not lean enough, they're not yeah. fast enough to kind of jump to some of the opportunities that arise. And I think that they are all they're all undervaluing um, uh, or understating the value of social uh, yeah. in, 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 in the reading context and a lot of people are doing it a bit weirdly as well if you see you know big players like Kobo for example or Amazon yeah. which is which are like yeah we'll do it but we'll do it later yeah. but that's or we just slap it on on the side and I, I you know it doesn't work you have to build you have to build trust and you have to build social into the network you can't you can't just add it on top afterwards it just doesn't work and, and when you found this space do you think that a lot of startups today are either just following other startups like okay instagram got sold for huge money let's do another photo sharing app or do you think that people are really thinking about which space is going to 
get disrupted now? I, I mean, uh, of course, there's both, mm -hmm. right? I mean, especially in Germany, we, 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 we see kind of a trend where where people tend to copy other services mm -hmm. and just you know just create um, very very actually very similar very similar um, businesses, but also um, um, uh, you know very inspired by mm -hmm. each other and so on. But uh, but there's al there's always the disruptors. There's always the uh, the people that are going for the big things mm -hmm. uh, that are, that you know have a maybe a lower chance of succeeding. But if they succeed, it's going to be yeah. truly revolutionary. Um, and I I mean I wouldn't say I, I mean I. I I don't know if Readme is one of those. Let's see. Let's see and wait how, how this space evolves, right? Yeah. But, but I, I, you know, I, I'm very. What I'm very proud of is actually working with books and literature, and mm. uh, it's something that actually turns people um, into more knowledgeable and, mm. and, and, and 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 you know more perhaps even smart people. Yeah. So that that's really cool. I and mean, everybody loves books, so it's kind of a nice <laughs> kind of a nice uh, nice place to be in. Yeah. So when was Reed Mill founded officially? Well actually officially I think it was founded uh, uh, February, March last year. Yeah. But we started hacking on it already in December okay. um, where we had this this revolutionary or this this eye-opening trip to San Francisco, uh, where we met with Katarina Feig, the yeah. founder of Flickr, and she showed us a picture of of uh, oh she showed, she didn't show us a picture she showed us the I took a picture but she showed us her copy of Ulysses, yeah. which uh, which had like uh, notes and, and highlights in, yeah. in the margin across the whole book. It was yeah. just an amazing sight, and I, we I think both me and David realized that you know this is such an untapped opportunity within yeah. books. And what uh, what stage would you say that you are now? We're still very early stage. Yeah. Yeah, we're still very early stage. Um, this is this is a this is a space that's uh, I mean apart from the big players, also quite technology heavy still because there's there's a lot of different formats and there's a lot of different devices that we need to support. So and it takes time to build these things, right? So so we're we're still focusing a lot on product. Mm -hmm. and we're we have a we have a we have a small amount of users. That are highly, highly engaged mm. and that really love the product, and now it's all about making it available for more people. Mm. And what's your biggest challenges right now? I think it is, you know, the the, the big players kind yeah. of navigate, navigating the mm. space and stay, staying lean, staying mm. kind of uh, uh, lean, hungry, and vicious yeah. enough to be able to jump on opportunities that are, arise with this big change that that, that stands before us. Um, and also, really, really focusing on not not losing sight of our core kind of our core thing, which is great, like great reading experience, mm -hmm. but also constructing this social object mm -hmm. and making that into a kind of a non-obtrusive thing. Uh, and how how do you think? Uh, what's your ideas of monetizing this? Um, um, ideas that we have now, you yeah. Mean? Yeah, I mean the, the the analytics is 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 a big thing that we that we have been discussing for a while, and you know the publishers I meet really wants to see this yeah. more, and everybody's talking about the the lack of analytics and the lack of data in the in the business in the state of the business right now. So I think that's that's going to be an important thing. But I mean we we are talking about monetization weekly at the yeah, office. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a big topic and we're and, speaking and about it with investors. When well. you saw this space, did monetization, when you started out at first, did you have the same ideas you have now or have those changed? Well, it has, it's, not, it's not a totally opposite idea, yeah. I think, or, or some, uh, something totally different, but it's still, it has changed a yeah, lot and yeah. it evolves all the time, right? And, uh, and I think uh, uh, it will continue to evolve all the time. They are uh, garbage dumping. Yeah, moving, moving. We're, <laughs> we're, we're kind of in the garbage room, which is, you know, it's, it's a great place to be. It smells good and, you know. Yeah. Um, so so uh, how would you say, uh, since you have actually failed to start up before, I have failed too. Good, <laughs> good, uh, good idea to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's good. But what, how, what do you, how would you see that, that uh, funding a startup in Berlin would be compared to Sweden? I, I, so it was interesting. Like when we left, there, there, it, it seemed like there wasn't a lot going on. So mm. I mean, they were like, yeah, okay, what should we do? Should we stay in, stay in Stockholm? And then, then, then we had this thing where we kind of wanted to go on an adventure together yeah. and also wanted to kind of go someplace that we could really, really focus. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> immediately when we left, we started hearing all of this, 
you know, great companies coming up like uh, Ted's latest thing, yeah. uh, Tripbirds, and uh, guys from Ticktail. Yeah. I mean, Rap. I mean, there's so many great companies in Stockholm now. So in a way, we're like, <laughs> damn, we missed the we missed the wave in a way. Um, so that was kind of that was kind of uh, that was kind of a bummer. I think you could be immensely success, successful running yeah. a company in Sweden, uh, yeah. running a company in Stockholm. I think, I think there are a few issues, um, mainly around I think space and kind of housing and so mm -hmm. on. Um, but that, I mean, just the talent that's in that city yeah. is, is amazing. I mean, look at like all of the great schools that are there and and the great engineer. I mean, especially mm -hmm. engineering. Yes, yeah. it's, it's crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. Developers from KTH and, and these schools are just, I mean, some of them, yeah. not all of them, like me. I, I'm not very good, but. That some of them are really, really good. So, uh, do you think that would be easier for you to get funding in Berlin? or Actually, we got funding before we decided okay. to move to Berlin. Yeah. So, I think that wasn't really a no, factor. No. Um, I think, you know, our investors really wanted us maybe to move to London to be close to them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but when we said we were moving to Berlin, they were like, Ah, okay, just do it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so that was uh, because it must be much cheaper to run a startup in Berlin compared to London, which is really expensive. Yeah. So, so, so compared, we did some, we did some calculation. Yeah. And the difference was quite large, yeah. actually. Yeah. So, so that was that was that was that was very different. And I think it's not only about price; it's also about perception. Yeah. Um, the perception of running is uh, the perception that people have is that it's very cheap to run a startup in Berlin, mm -hmm. which means that. When you get employees and so on, they, they just expect to earn less, yeah. which is yeah. good. And we, yeah. I mean, I've I've survived on, for like over one year now on a on a salary before tax of like two thousand one hundred euros, yeah. which gives me around in Swedish crowns like eleven thousand five hundred crowns yeah. after tax in, on, on my account. And like yeah. with that, I, I can live a good life yeah. in Berlin, yeah. which is yeah. which is of course like very cool. Um, so so what's um, What's the next step for you? So we released the uh, the, the the site and the the apps and the mm -hmm. platform we have in in public in, in December, mid December last year, mm -hmm. which means that we've been, we've been out for a couple of months now. Mm -hmm. And like the day after we released, we kind of started working on a new a next iteration of our yeah. product, um, which uh, which is soon coming up for release. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting. We've been very heads down in product yeah. for a long time now, and it's, it's so as as famously like Mark Zuckerberg says, um, and they're going into launch season. We're also going into launch season <laughs> in around. Uh, Three weeks a month or something like that. So that's for the summer really holiday reading. For the summer holiday reading, exactly. Oh, great! And it's good to release something before summer because then you can kind of. Uh, uh, oh dear. <laughs> okay. No. Um, so it's good to release a product before summer, pre-summer, because then people are maybe not so active on the web during the summer, and then they can, you know, we can trim it, so fix the iron out the main yeah. bugs, and then when they come back, it's done and ready. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good uh, way of testing out the stuff. So, so. When you think back, do you think you have learned some really valuable lessons from this uh, year with Readmill? Yeah, I mean, and there's something you can share. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think one one of the key things that we have learned actually is is, is um, trying to trying to build a great team is really mm -hmm. complicated. Mm -hmm. It's it's really it's really one. And people say it all the time. It's like, yeah, you have to. You have to on building team, and I, I've always regarded myself as kind of I, I know how to take people. I can yeah. kind of figure out if someone is good and so on. Totally wrong. I was <laughs> so bad. I was so I've I've made we've made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Uh, we also made a lot of successful yeah. hires, but we also made a lot of mistakes. And, and you had and, to fire people. Yeah, not not fire per se, yeah. but there was there was some people you know that that it's always a mutual thing yeah. in a way where you know it, it, it doesn't always work out, and I think that. that um, and both people, uh, both parties understand. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to find good people. Yeah. It's really hard, and, and they have to not only be good at what they do, but also fit into the culture mm -hmm. in a way, and so on. And it's really, it's really hard, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And advice, other advice to entrepreneurs? I, I, I just, I just said in an other interview as well. I think it's very important to to um, um, that everybody in the company is a maker. Yeah. So you actually create value mm -hmm. on a daily basis. I try. I try, I don't always succeed, but I really try to, to be hands-on with the products yeah. almost every day, uh, at least at least every week. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that's really important, kind of not lose, 
lose sight of what your core values are. Yeah. And, and that actually the product is, uh, is the most important thing that you're developing and, and that, it's your duty to make that into a kick-ass product. And that's quite different from a bigger company where you, at least in a management role or something like that, are really a far, far away from any kind yeah. of product or yeah. service or... Yeah. Yeah. But I'm a pro I'm also a product guy, yeah. so I'm like I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I love that. I love yeah. building, I love seeing how users use it and I love kind of fixing stuff that they that they don't think is good and so mm -hmm. on. So I, iteration and, and, and kind of building and fixing stuff is really something yeah. that I'm very passionate about. So since you're here in Berlin, tell us a little about the Berlin startup scene in general. <laughs> I think a lot of Swedes are and people outside yeah. Berlin are quite curious about that, and you have a bit of an outside view, at least. It's 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 cool actually yeah. right now. I I thought I thought I mean, ever since last year, I thought that kind of by now the hype would maybe the growth would kind of not lessen. You say yeah, lessen a bit and, and, and kind of flatten out mm. the curve, and flatten out. But actually, more and more people are moving here all yeah. the time and yeah. setting up companies. People are moving from throughout Germany, but also from throughout Europe, mm. um, and it's it's really cool. And I I said yesterday to some to some um, uh, entrepreneurs that the kind of collective intelligence of founders mm -hmm. now in Berlin is, is extremely high. Yeah. Um, and not only from, from kind of a product stance, but also from a, a kind of a, a funding and investment stance, yeah. right? Because we, we now have, I mean, the, 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 all, of the, all of the startups in Berlin now, basically together, now have at least, at least one investment from all of the bigger Kind of early stage funds yeah. throughout the world. Yeah. Um, maybe not Asia, but at least yeah. like US and, and, and Europe. I mean, there is uh, uh, there is Sequoia companies, there is uh, benchmark companies, there is index companies, there is um, uh, SV Angel company. I mean, there's 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 all of these things. So so in a way, you have access to all of the funds in the world, uh, which is which is pretty amazing actually. And also, I think this when it comes to product and design, there's a lot of great products in Berlin right now. I mean, SoundCloud, they've really really set a standard, a high yeah. bar for, for for great products and we're just trying to follow on. And, and, uh, and so it, it's cool, it's cool, it's very cool. And it's very friendly. I just want to comment on one last thing and that's yeah. kind of the friendship economy. It's very strong. Yeah. So we help each other out a lot yeah. as well. And there's no kind of, there is rivalry of course, but we're trying to not put that first. Yeah. We're trying to kind of not be rivals first yeah. time, be friends first time. I also want to ask you when you went for because I know this uh, this is a question that a lot of people are interested in when you went to ha to to get funding. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any tips around that? What what you find worked and didn't work? Yeah. Uh, what kind of of you know levels you you um, approach people on? I, I can I can I can I, I have these five things yeah. that 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 uh, I, I gave it a talk last year at the startup day uh, as a CS mm. my old school, um, which let's see if I can remember them in, in my head now. But the first one is use use your network, mm. right? And if you don't have one, you have to build one, and you build one fast. And for me, that was kind of calling. Um, uh, a friend of mine, Alex, that, that I know was really good at raising money and kind of ask him for advice early on so you kind of learn how to do kind of the basics mm -hmm. um, and also get introductions to a lot of people that, that were interesting. Um, second thing is to actually spend your last money and go to Silicon Valley and yeah. kind of figure out what's happening there. It's still the epicenter of technology startups in the world. And, and, and kind of figure out what are people doing, has people tried this before, you know, uh, who are doing similar things and so on. Kind of just figure out, maybe not to raise money, but just to become a bit more knowledgeable. And be, mm -hmm. So when people actually ask you, so what's going, uh, what's going on in the US, you actually know the answer yeah. to that question, which is really cool. Uh, the, the, sec the third thing is shopping out of your local city. So mm -hmm. if you're a Swedish entrepreneur living in Stockholm or, or, or so on, you should shop outside of Sweden. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, especially for Swedes, like Swedish mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, I mean, we are so popular right yeah. now. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's really, really, really... And we don't have that much money at home. No, no. <laughs> but, I mean, we're, we're really, we're really, I mean, in a way, we're hardworking, trustworthy, good sense of product, good sense of design, and a great business mm -hmm. mind. And we have great education. So, so Swedish entrepreneurs are very popular. That's what I heard when I went around. It's yeah. like, oh, you're Swedish. Okay, but then you get a meeting right, <laughs> out, right away. I'm not kidding. Like, that's how it was. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, fourth is uh, learn the tactics. Mm -hmm. So 
there are a lot of s stuff around kind of negotiation and the, the kind of the timing of how you raise a round and so on. And there, 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 are, there are a lot of good blog posts and also, I mean, here again, you should use your mentor and your network kind of figure out what the basic tactics are. Because the people you're dealing with, they're experts. Yeah. They do this all day long. Yeah. Right? So it's the only thing they do, kind of negotiate with people around valuations and so on. So you have to make sure that you also know what certain stuff means. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I, I was not very good there. I, I was like more like, I'll just play it by the ear. Yeah. Like, try and figure it out. Yeah. And uh, the fifth thing is uh, try to become friends. Uh, try to pull the uh, negotiations off the negotiation table, kind of over coffee or beers or even uh, dinner and so on, to kind of catch them a bit off guard uh, and make them like you as a person because that's going to make them more, uh, more, um, uh, more inclined to invest. That sounds like great <laughs> final words. Thank you so much Thank you, for this Annika. interview. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.